Yeah. Oh, it's back to Kenji's perspective. How do we know this? Because he's in white, not pink. That's what they're gonna use to differentiate between the two characters of Alex Finn. You know, the thing is with this character that was just introduced, it's like she hasn't physically appeared in the story, but she has sort of been there at the same time in one of the other arcs, but I won't say anything more than that. But you'll I'm pretty sure it, yeah, might maybe I I can't remember. I'm not sure if it's this arc or a different arc. But you'll see what I mean whenever that happens. I don't want to see any sweets for at least three days. Ugh. But at least now we're getting the aftermath. Ha, <laughs> you tried a little too hard, Kate Schoon. No, I prefer things from Kate's perspective. And it's interesting seeing it from Rana's perspective. But the reason why I say it's I like it from Kate's perspective is because if it's from Rana's perspective, when Rana's lines come up, she's not on screen. And he just kind of lacks something, you know, when that happens. Like Kate, she can get away with not appearing on screen, because that was pretty much the, you know, first question arc in a nutshell, you know. Rena ate a massive amount of desserts too, but her stomach seemed to be just fine. I think girls have four stomachs, or at least an extra stomach for desserts. It's very rude of you to say something like that to a lady. This is what you get for being rude. Ow, Mr. Circuit pecked me very hard in my bloated stomach. Oh, ow. Ah, stop it! Please don't poop my stomach. Gotta throw up bleh! Circuit Rigshan grinned mischievously upon hearing that. A chill ran up my spine. It's like, oh, no, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you want me to throw up, huh? Well, I throw up on you, you bastards! Why would they smile like that and walking towards me so gleefully? No, stop it! You're cold bloody demons! Seriously, where's the logic in that, girls? If you poke him till he throws up, he might throw up on you. Ho oh, ho ho! This is for a once in a lifetime opportunity! Do you really think I let it slip away? Me. Your bloated tummy is in danger, KG. Hi, <laughs> your big wiggly tummy so cute! Stop it! Oh no! Oh god, if Renna in cute mode is doing that as well, he is totally going to explode. Renna joins the and Rick Chen torturing me. We're still making a lot of noise outside the restaurant. But who won? I desperately blocked my stomach from their attacks, but someone else hit me from behind. Ah, oh, how is it? Oh, Chion. Hello, hello, nice to see you, Kei Chan and his funny friends. Oh, Shi-chan, why the hell didn't you at least make a friggin' cameo appearance, you frickin' worker angel mod, for God's sake? Where the hell were you in that scene? Hello. You weren't at the restaurant today, were you? Well, at least they acknowledge that. I'm working night shift today. I just changed after getting here. How can you go outside the restaurant wearing that uniform? Well, I'm not embarrassed, especially not since you had to walk around in way more embarrassing costume the other day. Yeah, <sighs> damn it, I was just getting over it. She had just reminded me that I'll never be able to get married. What? That's that's exactly how Rena worded her punishment back when they were still doing the water garden thing. It's okay, she must have experienced something very similar. Anyway, I heard you went crazy in a restaurant today. Haha, <laughs> we did. We had to since it turned into a club activity, you know? You made a big mess in there. It looks like Sis felt guilty, so she's helping the waitresses clean up the store now. I still think we should help them clean. Oh, don't worry about it. We can't let customers do that. Plus, me made most of the mess. Yeah, that's right. Everybody not in an agreement. Any backstory on that? Because, you know, we've suddenly just switched randomly to Renner's perspective for, you know, actual main plot stuff. Where it's like, okay, because this this is going to develop Renner, this arc will be for. So, you know, we got to focus on that. It's just like, it's like, oh, interesting, a different character we've never seen before. Hmm. And the mood feels kind of somber throughout that scene. It's like, hmm. But it completely, like... Is, is 
did a 180. It's like, okay, we got this lovely, funny scene taking place, and suddenly, whoosh, to the bathroom. Ah, uh, it's just like, kind of melancholic. Yes, reflecting on life, yes. So what's the backstory? He's going to tell you guys that you don't have to wait for her. You can go home now. No, no details? No, we're going to wait. Right, everybody? Raina asked for our agreement. Of course, we decided to wait without hesitation. So Grigson and I all nodded to Gallop. So we can't help her clean, that's the least we can do. While she says uh, we can go home, I'm pretty sure she'd be sad if we really did leave. Well, Kitchen, you grew up. I'm impressed. <laughs> he grew up alright. That's because we've been training him well, right? That's correct. Nippoo! You girls always band together when it comes to things like this. White girls, they get along so easily just because they're girls. You say that, Kate, she better can be the exact opposite as well. I mean, you hear this, like, where people are just like, you know what? Uh, men can never understand women. And I, f I forget what, what this quote is from. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's probably a stand up comedian, but I can't remember. It's just like, men can't understand women, but women understand women, and they hate each other. <laughs> Something like that. So, you know, just because, like, some girls can get along just fine, but some girls are right bastards and they just fucking just, like, start shit with others and they just hate each other, essentially. So, sure, they can get along, but a lot of times it's like getting along on the surface, but underneath it is just like, I hate your guts, you bitch. Well, you're an even bigger bitch, bitch. Some girls, man, just do not get along at all. In the end, we end up making a lot more noise, even dragging Shion into the mess this time. Shion, get back in here and help us clean. Where do you put the wa uh, wash clothes? Gloves. Oh no, I guess I have to go back to work now. Me Chan, do you think it's gonna take a while? What? Why are you still here? Are you waiting for uh, this old man? Don't worry about me. Going home already. Man looked happy to see us waiting for her, but she always says the opposite of what she thinks. I wonder what she'll grab to be able to just honestly say thank you. Her friends, remember, or we'll wait until we finish up. I wish we could help you. I feel bad. That we don't even get real context on what the hell she had to clean. I imagine they probably vomited all over the place, that's my guess. I told you, don't you have to wait for me. Either that or, like, desserts went flying everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for Shion to finish work tonight, then head to her house in Okamere afterward. So you really don't need to wait for me. I do appreciate it, though. Are you sure? I still feel bad. Yeah, me, me too, me too. We have enough people, so really, don't worry about it. Go home before it gets too cold. We understand. Mia, yeah, I hope you can finish cleaning soon. Go for it. Yay! <laughs> oh, thanks. And all that. Okay, Chan. I trust you to escort the ladies home safely. Please protect them from assassins on their way home. Looking around, I didn't see any ladies who needed an escort. I felt more like I was the one who needed protection. Anyway, we said our goodbyes, making it easier for us to end the day and go home. Goodbye, me chance. See you tomorrow. Yep, see you tomorrow. All right, let's go then. We waved that me on until she went back inside the restaurant, and after that, we all got on our bicycles and left Okinawa. On the way home, we talked about how exciting it had been today, and it looked like everyone was still fired up. We had the horrifying punishment and the competitive eating contest, which turned into an unprecedented battle involving all the customers in the restaurant, and after that, everything got crazy and messy. So I guess everyone else got involved. At first, the waitresses didn't know what to do, but after a while, they ended up joining in. We had a blast. So even the waitresses. That was wonderful. Did you see what Tamita and Okamura Curran did? How amusing it was. 
<laughs> Isn't it amusing when the interesting shit happens, but it's off screen? Isn't that wonderful? No. Why didn't we get to see it? I felt sorry for Kamita and Irie. So did I, but didn't you but think my speech was great? Everyone in the restaurant was on my side after that. So, Keiichi gave a really passionate, convincing speech that got everyone on his side and screwed over Comedia and Irie, and uh, Tomita and Nakamura probably also lost as well, but he convinced him to screw over Comedia and Irie somehow, and won, I assume. But then what happened after that? <laughs> probably like, you won the game, but you can't enjoy what the winner gets, because at that point, everyone must have been like, oh, oh stomach, oh god. Kate, you might have been completely, uh, been somebody really important if you were born in a different era. What, this idiot? He's much too full of himself. An idiot will always remain an idiot, no matter when or when he's born. If he was born a hundred years earlier, he might have gotten printed on bills. Money with Kate says face on it. How pathetic. It would only be worth two or three hundred yen at the most. It's <laughs> just like implying, just like, oh yeah, anyone who's on money from a hundred years ago was an idiot. So Rika claims. Satoko and Rika Chan kept up their continuous chatter. I was a bit tired after the day's events, so I just listened quietly. I noticed the wind was getting colder. Our shadows were getting longer as well. So can Rika Chan still had a lot of energy left, but what about Rena? She'd been very quiet. Maybe she also had a stomachache from eating too much. Well, considering we got to see a scene from her perspective, she's probably just kind of like, you know, reflecting on it and trying to make, you know, just like the best of the happy moments. I looked at Rena to see. However, I was wrong. Rena was. I didn't really know how to describe it. She looked very satisfied. She looked like she really did have that much fun. She looked like she was as happy as she could ever be. I could tell all that without her saying a word. When I looked at her, it made me realize that the word fun wasn't enough to describe what we did today. Seems like you had a lot of fun. Hmm, what about you, Kate-kun? I had a blast too. I wish we could have as much fun tomorrow and the day after tomorrow too. I feel the same way. I wish from the bottom of my heart that the time we spend in the restaurant today would last forever. Oh, wow, that's kinda poetic. Don't you agree, Kate Chikun? Rena didn't notice that how I made fun of her. You know, the thing with that is like, when you're having fun, you think it's like, oh, if yeah, only this moment could last forever. But if you really think about it, if it did last forever, it'd get pretty old, regardless of how fun it is. Is why, you know, the saying is like, all good things must come to an end. It would get stale as well, you know, like I said. I might have been a little tactless. Suddenly, I regretted having said it. I do, I totally agree with you. That was probably the case, yeah. But you know something, today's not the only day that's filled with happiness. A cool wind blew through her hair. She smiled at me and for some reason she looked very mature. Her appearance made my heart skip a beat. Every single one of our days in Enemy's Hour is a wonderful, precious and irreplaceable day full of happiness. Including the boring days when our club activities get cancelled. Rena, you think about things in a very mature way. Yeah, it's like such a big drastic difference when we switched to Rena's perspective, wasn't it? Like, such a distinct difference compared between her and Keiichi when it's like from the point of view. Because it was the same with Shion in uh, Merkashi, but again, that was different to both of these characters. And I quite like that. Every character has a distinct kind of perspective there. We don't really, I don't think we see from every character's perspective. I think we've seen at one point or another. Or at least probably will, I don't know. But I imagine we could see things from Satoko's perspective at least once or twice. I mean, I don't know. We'll also get to see from Rika's perspective as well. But that's not for this arc. And... we Have we even seen anything from Mion's perspective? Like, directly from her point of view? We might have. 
I mean, mice in the, one of the other two arcs, but I'm not 100% sure. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Honestly, I'm still not done playing around yet. Maybe it's just because I'm still excited. Rena laughed, and that made me laugh too. Snuggle thought that we were laughing because we said bad things about her, and she started bugging me about it. Once again, we made a lot of noise like we always do. Well, Stoke and I are taking the, this turn here. Rico, why not walk with them a little further and turn when it when it's a ears? You can why not walk with them a little further and turn when and blah, 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 the tobacco stories instead? Did you forget our night night light burned out? About that, it's too dark for us to sleep. Uh, oh, that would be quite the problem. Well, I see you need to go to Makino San's general store, and I guess we'll say goodbye here. You'd better take this turn, or you'd have to go a long way around. Back in the Sands General Store. Alright, oh, that's where it is. If you want to make a stop at the store before going back to the shrine, turning here would be the quickest way. I can never tell which character is speaking when it goes into this kind of transition, you know? Okay then, bye, Rick Chan. Bye, Sudoku. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Farewell, Keiichi san. Farewell, Rider san. See you do tomorrow, bye bye. You know that. Can't tell which character's saying what line. Rick Jensen took a wave that as many times and took the narrow path through the field. Once the noisy girls were gone, it went especially quiet all of a sudden. Quiet, my ass. You hear that sound? <laughs> It even made me feel as if the sun had set in an instant. I could see my house by now, by in which everybody called my Mara Mansion. I didn't notice it earlier because of how fired up we all were, but my stomach was about to burst. What was he gonna do for dinner? <laughs> Did you think of that consequence, Keiichi? The growling in my gut felt like thunder. My body must have been paying the price for me acting like an idiot earlier. There was no way I was eating dinner that night. I needed to tell my mum because she started cook before she started cooking. But before anything, I had to get to the bathroom. Ugh, my stomach was churning. Oh boy, really didn't sound good. We got to the place where I'd always meet Rena in the morning and say goodbye in the evening. I really did have a lot of fun today, but my stomach didn't. Mm, me too. Are you feeling okay, Cage Coon? <laughs> My stomach's growling. I guess I just need to get some rest. <laughs> you need to train your stomach, huh? <laughs> you ate about as much as I did. How did you fit all that inside your tiny body? <laughs> that would be a woman's secret. Renna giggled and tried to avoid giving me an answer. She'd probably hit me if I pressed her about it. If she punched me in the stomach, I'd drop for sure. So I decided not to go any further. Goodbye, Rena. See you tomorrow. Yes. See you tomorrow. You know, I used to live in a city. Yeah? I never managed to enjoy each and every day like this before. But after moving to Inamizawa, you know, I think I found happiness. I feel the same way. I moved to Inamizawa a year ago. I can't believe I'm as happy as I am and spend every day having so much fun as I do. I see. I'm sure tomorrow will be the same. You know, every time a scene like this happens, it usually is an indicator, isn't it? It's like, oh, the plot will get more serious after this. But it's a bit early for that, isn't it? I mean, how many parts into this now are we? I mean, this might be like split up into two parts, obviously, so about six and seven. So honestly, I feel like we'll probably get through this arc long before they release the next one, which, given the current track record, maybe a year and a half from now. Okay, that's red and white. That's why we had so much fun yesterday and today. So tomorrow will be the same. 
of all the fun we have every day, I sometimes feel like I'm going to trip and fall sometime. It kind of scares me. <laughs> you fall when you fall, no matter how careful you are. That's why I believe we have to enjoy every moment as much as we can. You're right. We gotta enjoy every day as much as we can. Well, it's probably time to go. Please say hi to your parents for me. Well, I still have a lot of energy left. Oh, so I'm going to go treasure hunting. What are you going there now? You sure are resilient. I'm impressed. What about you? Would you like to come along? I found a new pile of trash that I haven't dug up yet. I might find something totally cute in there. I'm sorry, but I gotta pass. Besides, it looks like a storm's brewing. A storm called Plot. I think you should go straight home too. Oh, I usually find something cute when I have a wonderful day like today. So I'm going there just for a few minutes. <laughs> I felt sick enough that I didn't feel like going with her. If I felt better, I would have gone treasure hunting with her for sure. She didn't want to go home yet because she didn't want the fun day to end. That's exactly how I felt too. Understand. Bye then. I hope you can find something cute. Yep, thank you. Bye bye. Gonna switch to her perspective now? Yep. Kitchikun waved over and over as if he didn't want to say goodbye yet. It's interesting, you know. It's like. So far, Anstrok wise, we had Meakashi, which was the Anstrok to Watanagashi, which played the whole route the exact same way. This one doesn't, but that one did. But it was just from a different kind of perspective. And it, I think it stayed for a, a Shion's perspective the whole time, I think. Occasionally had a few perspectives from Satoshi, but it was mostly just Shion, you know? But then, this one has two characters that we've grown very familiar with throughout the series, and the dual protagonists in this. Ren is the main focus. Hard to believe, other than the intro, really, until this point, isn't it? Because it's just been from a cage perspective, but now it's going into dual perspective. You have it from cage perspective, then you move it to Ren's perspective. But again, at the start, where she's like telling everyone else, okay, so how this is how we all ended up here. It's like I'm going to tell you things from Cage's perspective that she would not know because she's not Cage. But it's obvious they're just doing it in this way to make it, you know, more enjoyable, more interesting to have like a dual protagonist thing. And Keiichi is the more familiar kind of protagonist. Because, you know, we've seen it from his perspective from most of this series so far, so yeah, why not? Anyway, Keiichi Kun waved over and over as if he didn't want to say goodbye yet. It's like a phone call, except it's in real life. Just, just like waving instead of just saying, I'm gonna hang up now, yeah, I'm hanging up now. Could you shut up? I'm trying to hang up the bloody phone. After a while, he was gone. Well, I had to go too, because I was going to go treasure hunting. I love cute things! Had such a wonderful day today that I'm sure I'm going to get lucky at treasure hunting. I'm sure it's not going to lead anything to, like, a more serious tone. Surely not. You know, it actually makes sense if you, like, been paying attention to the series. Just, like, you think, oh, from Red's perspective, that would be all nice and fun, wouldn't it? Well, the things we've learned about Ren after this series has been quite different. I mean, she's like, she has that bubbly kind of personality, but underneath that bubbly personality, we've seen other layers, you know. Like, when it comes to Oyashura somewhere, we've seen quite a bit of that, you know. And in Onikakushi, which is this the answer arc to, we, like, learned a few things about her from Oishi, about her at her old school, if you remember way back when. So we, like, we kind of know that she's got a bit more to her personality than the bubbly side to it. So it kind of makes sense that now that... Bird, now that we see her from her perspective, we can see that she's got that bubbly personality, but she's also got a bit of a kind of... Uh, somewhat more mature kind of outlook on things. Sort of, to an extent. Just like the type that's just like... She kind of almost has a melancholic outlook on life a bit. Despite the fact that she's trying to convince herself, just like, make the best out of every moment. 
change. It kind of implies, in a way, kind of like there's some kind of underlying thing to a personality of some sort. I don't know how to describe it. I definitely will find some wonderful treasures. I could make a cliffhanger here, but I can't be bothered. It's nearly 6 a.m. I pedaled my bicycle with determination. Imagine if this is how her inner voice sounded like. Just like, Rena, why, why does your inner voice sound like a man? My house was nearby, but I took an old street that led to the damn construction sites. It might have been okay to go home just then. But I hesitated to go since I didn't want to be seen. I had so much fun today, and I wanted to continue feeling happy as long as I could. See, that right there gives an implication there, doesn't it? I had so much fun today, and I wanted to continue feeling happy as long as I could. She's like, what's up with that? It's just like, she doesn't want to go home just yet, because she wants to make the most of her fun day. Does that imply things at home aren't so fun? Hmm? It was already getting late, but I felt like it was getting dark faster than usual. Just like Kate couldn't said, the clouds in the sky were growing darker. Ominously, they were just like, the plot, the plot calls, the plot calls, and just like, well, hold on, back up, back up, it isn't time for that yet. I mean, usually when that happens, it, you have to wait until the festival to show up, you asshole. Stay back, it's like, ooh, but this one might not even be about that, maybe, I can't even remember. It's like, no, fuck off. Not time for the dark side of the plot yet. Just like it, you can hear the blah blah. It might start raining hard. And you don't exactly have a coat. But that doesn't mean I have to go home already. Stop it, Rena. You had so much fun today. You have to stay happy as long as you can. See? She's got a forceful kind of side to her. So despite what she said, she's got a more mature kind of thing. She's also got a bit of an immature side to her as well, isn't it? It's like, no, 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 force yourself to be happy, Rena. You're not allowed to feel sad emotions. You're not allowed. You're only allowed to be happy. You've got to be the happy, bubbly personality. That's the impression I'm getting from this alone, honestly. I'm happy. I enjoy every day. Renner, say it. Say the magical words. How? Don't be embarrassed. You're not dumb or anything. I might be able to enjoy every day even more if I were dumb. If so, dumb is what I'd want to be. Oh, I'm gonna find something so, so cute. I take it home with me. There, I said it. I'm sure I can find something cute. As long as I believe it's cute, anything can be that way. I wonder with that line there, it's like, does she really find half this stuff cute, or is she just like, forcing it to be cute? There's so much to Renna where we're just like, was it all a lie, Renna? How much of your bubbly personality was real? I thought I knew you! I should fill my heart with the happy memories of today and yesterday. I should look forward to the happiness I'm going to receive tomorrow and the day after tomorrow too. She probably does find these things cute, despite how weird they are half the time. The sky is pink. I reached the damn construction site and a mountain of trash loomed before me. I parked my bicycle and walked down a mountain of trash and scrap. This place is my castle. It would be incredible if anyone else came to this mountain of trash. I've come here many times and I usually stay for a long while, but I've never seen anybody walk by. This place is the village's blind spots. I heard that many people came here all the time during the damn wars, but it was abandoned after that. The villagers no longer need to come here, and some people even forgot about it entirely. Seems like they dump trash here at midnight, but I've never seen a truck actually dumping trash, at least. If they dump new trash more often, it'd give me more time to kill. But it looks like it's not gonna happen for a while. I walked down the slope of the trash pile all the way down to the bottom and headed behind another pile. Nobody ever comes here. I've come here many times and I usually stay for a long while, but nobody was there has ever come to mess up this place. Just like, you just... you just... Trying to get that run home right there, isn't it? It's like, yeah, nobody ever shows up. Just so that would be surprising when the scene probably leads to someone actually showing up. Not even the other kids from my school came here, come here. 
They'll believe that the arm of the manager of the construction site is buried somewhere in the trash piles, and they also believe the whole place is haunted. They told me that a ghost with one arm still wanders around here, looking for his missing limb. Sadly, I haven't seen the ghost either. I'm not scared. In fact, I'd rather like to meet him. I wouldn't mind helping him find his arm. <laughs> I can imagine that. The armless guy just walking around with her, just looking for the arm. He's like, I think I... No, no, that isn't it. If he's feeling lonely, I'd want him to be my... Uh, conversation partner. There's a station wagon buried in the trash pile. It doesn't have tires, but on that, it still looks like a station wagon. The station wagon is my secret hideout. Unfortunately, the sliding door and rear doors don't open. So, whenever I want to get in, I have to enter the car from the passenger seat and crawl into the back from there. Of course, I take off my shoes at the passenger seats. When you look at it from the outside, it's just a dirty abandoned car. But on the inside, it's nice and clean because I had swept it out and decorated a little. That took me a long time. The back seats are lying flat because I want to have as much space as possible. I found a mattress in a tra trash pile and put it into that space instead. It was a bit dirty so I brought a bed sheet from home and covered the mattress with it. I put my favorite cushions on top and with that it turned into a perfect bed. I put cushions and stuffed animals everywhere. That's not all, look at this. <laughs> I have a bunch of sweets here too. I have a bag of fruit candy in four different colors and some cookies. But they're going bad, I'll have to throw them away. <laughs> well, conveniently, Rena, you're out of trash dump. My bear sheep water bottle was empty. When I. Wait, bear sheep water bottle? Is it literally shaped like a bear? When I come here to spend some time on Sundays, I usually bring this water bottle with some sweetened tea in it. I have a box of tissues, a flashlight, extra batteries, and all our daily necessities in here. I also have a few books to read in order to kill some time while I'm at it. I have this. What do you think this is? Look. ta -da! My hideout is suddenly lit up thanks to the table lamp. There's an electric outlet on the side of an old nearby construction office. I thought they'd cut the power years ago, but to my surprise, I was wrong. You know what? This this whole scene kind of feels a bit odd, with the way way it's kind of written. It's like Renner's just like, okay, you, you, yes, you, the reader, check out my crib. I've got this car all pimped out. Got cushions, plushies, a lamp. I got all signs of stuff in my cute mobile. The electricity is still being supplied to the outlets. When I found tons of extension cords, I came up with the idea to connect them all and make the electricity come all the way to my hideouts. Now I can spend time here comfortably with some sweets, books, and lights. If I wanted to, I might be able to spend a night here. But I may catch a cold since it gets very cold at night. <laughs> See, this is a very nice hideout, isn't it? At first, I thought somebody would find it and mess with it. You now, can you imagine if I read all of this in the Rena voice? That would be difficult to do. But that hasn't happened so far. That's because nobody comes here, and everybody forgot about this place. That's how this place became my perfect secret hideout. Fortunately, I ate so much today that I'm still full. I can tell that uh, tell them that I was playing with my friend at her house and ate dinner there. I'm gonna say stay here for a while and relax. I'm going to treat myself. I loved the water gun battle yesterday. That was only yesterday then? It's like, we didn't get context in that. Just went from the water gun fight to that. So I was like, was it like a few days or not? I'm coming to think about it. That implies they do have school on a Saturday, man. How hellish. On a Saturday? That mean you only get Sunday off. That's terrible. I mean, they've got a pretty casual, kind of nice, kind of, you know, school life going, but still. School, six days a week? My god! My heart had been pounding when I fought one on one with Kechikun. I also had great fun at Angelmore today. I've never experienced such a crazy game with so many people in my life. 
I was still feeling the after effects and I was sure I'd have a dream about it tonight. That was why I went to the bask in these happy feelings. That was why I'm going to treat myself in here. I should take off my shoes and stretch my toes. I should share some time where I can be myself. Mm. Once I took off my shoes, I felt so relaxed that I didn't want to put them on again. I played all day today and I was very tired. The treasure hunt could wait. As it got darker, the light of the table lamp became encouraging. It really was getting dark faster than usual. All of a sudden, I heard the sound of raindrops hitting the roof of the car. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. The interval between drops get shorter and shorter. When it became a continuous sound, I began to hear thunder. Even though it was raining heavily, it remained very quiet inside the car. It made me feel like I was in a different world. It's my castle, after all. I felt a bit cold, so I unfolded my big blanket and hid under it. I'm here alone under the warm blanket that has my scent. Even though nobody knew where I was at the moment, and I feel like I was left alone in the heavy rain, I still feel secure and free from anxiety for some reason. I felt like this heavy rain was keeping my enemies away from my castle. I liked it that way. This place is full of small happiness. It's full of my favorite things. That's why I'm happy whenever I'm here. When I put an old blanket over me, I felt as warm as if I were in a bed. I listened to the soothing sounds of raindrops hitting the scrap iron in the trash heaps, and it made me feel sleepy. This is a castle of trash. This trash came here because nobody wanted it. This is where it lives. This is a country where unwanted refugees live together. I felt like I fit in here. At the same time, you know, it was just a temporary place for me, as there was somewhere I had to go back to. No, I shouldn't think about things like that. Never I realized that I don't belong here. I remember I'm in the middle of a very dirty pile of trash. I should have stowed for a little bit longer. Thinking is poisonous. I need to keep myself out of that poison. Or that, the kind Renovu and me could stay pure. Yes, yeah, see? Indication that she doesn't like to f loom her thoughts to loom in on negative things. She tries to keep herself as pure as possible, both outwards and inwards. A little bit longer, just a little bit longer, and I close my eyes. Igarashi, when the car can't 